As you all know, the Washington Monument sustained damage during the August 23rd earthquake which occurred in this region. Since that time, we have been assessing the damage to get a better idea of what needs to be done to allow us to reopen this important landmark to the public. This is an fundamentally an unreinforced masonry structure, perhaps one of the tallest in the world. When the ground causes it to sway, uh, and the ground shaking did cause it to sway and vibrate in many, in many ways, uh, the, the, the deformation of the monument itself, uh, where it's great enough, caused the mortar joints to, to open up. What you're seeing here is the back side of the exterior marble and a bearing condition for the marble. This is literally what's supporting uh, that stone on the outside of, of the structure. Uh, because of the way this goes together, uh, the condition right now is stable, but we do very clearly have a situation at the bearing condition that we, uh, we know we're going to need to take a closer look at and stabilize. I'm using ultrasonic equipment, GPR equipment, other NDE techniques uh, to assess conditions, uh, usually in the field. Understanding how that uh, uh, piece of the, of the monument went together and also beginning to think about uh, pattern cracking, uh, the movement of the monument in the earthquake, all of those things starting to connect those dots a little bit and understanding uh, uh, more about uh, the type of movement encountered and why it made sense that we were seeing the, the types of uh, shear cracking and, and, and spalling in the locations we saw those conditions were, were quite unique and, and interesting. I'm almost done. Just double checking everything, making sure all the tension's good on these ropes. Our slings are in place and padded well. This is the large crack on the west elevation. Uh, the bottom displacement horizontally is seven eighths of an inch. Both the monument and the cathedral, uh, iconic structures and uh, something that uh, I don't think any of us will ever forget. A once in a lifetime experience. Since the earthquake, uh, we've been out here with a team of engineers and architects assessing the cathedral. Uh, what we've been concerned with is some of the ornamental limestone on the structure. We have seen a lot of unique craftsmanship in the details of the ornate stones, and we've witnessed also some of what the earthquake took down. I'm a stone carver and stonemason employed by the National Cathedral. Well, the cathedral is like the, it's for a stone carver, that's like the pinnacle. I mean, it's, you know, that's what carving's about. That's, that's, that's what drew me into the trade. It's just the, the, the Gothic form is just so, so rich in embellishment. It just draws you in. I was on the west end doing some uh, stair repair, and I felt a really strong shift in the earth, which kind of almost knocked me off my feet. It wasn't, it was, you know, the thinking didn't hit me all at once, because the east coast with earthquakes, pretty rare. And then there were elements actually and then I heard secondary noises, things hitting the roofs and bouncing off. And, uh, and then I said, I better get myself away from this facade. It's just, you know, 260 feet of uh, masonry that's above me. And the central tower is 300 plus. So I said, I got to, you know, I ran back away as far as I could and just observed things still, still settling, I guess. And other things I saw strikes and broken stones stuck in the lawn. And I was just, wow, this is, uh, it took, it took several moments just to grasp the enormity of it. I remember my uh, boss, I said, Joe, we got to take a look at the big tower because I, I, I knew that probably the effects would be greater up as high, the higher you go. We made our way to the top and we were the first two out onto the roof and then what confronted what, us was just all that stonework. The roof deck of the tower just littered, you know, looking at these finials, the finials of, on top of that tower that are four feet tall, just laying shattered on the on the roof and all the other bits and pieces of stone. I was here when it when the earthquake happened and I I was in the shop and it didn't at first I didn't realize it was ha happening because I hadn't been through an earthquake before and it just didn't occur to me that the building sustained damage. Then when I went outside and looked up and saw there were actual finials missing, I was like, oh, holy cow. When the earthquake hit, uh, most of the damage was in the, the top of the, the pinnacles on top of the buttresses and the towers 
And this came off of one of the flying buttresses. This, this is the actual original over here. These pieces that I'm working on are um, damaged. You can see that, that the stone has got some age on it and some uh, biological growth on it and some weathering. It's a little coarser than uh, going from new. These stones were shaken and removed by a crane. And uh, a typical uh, problem with the heavy masonry moving is that things fracture. And so these bottoms of these uh, corners break off. There are impacts from other stones falling above and, and hitting these projections. They call these a crocket form. It's kind of a stylized leaf, which adorns all the pinnacles. So we're repairing the dings, the bangs. When you compare it to something like the monument, uh, there are more surprises out here. And certainly when you talk to some of the team members as they scale some of the pinnacles, uh, they're discovering pieces that are quite unstable at a height of 200, 300 feet in the air. The ornamentation, the, the stonework that's up there, the carvings that are up there, I mean, getting to climb out on them and touching them and looking at them up close, I mean, there's some detail that is just absolutely amazing. Very few people get to do what we're doing, and I feel very honored.